to be a part of real takes over fake debates with sponsorship, promos, or even a shout out? Go to business at realtakesoverfakedebates.com or business at sbtalksports.com. No hidden schemes, just sports, passion, fueling dreams. From the field to the court, every play that's made. Real takes over fake debates. Turn it up, hear the honest sound. Unfiltered sports all year round. Discussions pure, no masquerade. Real takes over fake debates. Talk Sports, Shire Web, Real Takes Over Fake Debates. It is Monday, Sean. I would say, how you doing, Sean? But I kind of know. So, but the people don't know. How how, how you doing, Sean? Oh, I'm hanging in there, SB, fighting off a flu. Came on all of a sudden yesterday, so fighting that off. And uh, But yeah, I'm good, man. Going to rock, push through this thing today, man. But appreciate you. No problem. I need everybody and all our, our people who support us. Type get well soon, Sean in the chat. And also the people who listen to audio, comment under there. Tell Sean get well soon. Sean is a trooper. He's still here. We could have we could have we could have took the show off today, but my boy said, now nah, we go do it. We true we go we go troop through it. And we gonna get it done for you. But we go we go hurry up, get into the sport talks. Cause Sean needs to go get some tea, some noodles, and some rest. Let's go ahead and get into the work, Sean. Um we got to start off. Obviously, the NBA season is is pretty much here. We're in a preseason. NBA season is coming up soon next. But we did get our first glimpse of LeBron James and Bronny James, first father son duo ever in NBA history to play in the same game during the Lakers preseason game versus the Suns. Um, what was your like reaction to it? Because it kind of hit different for me. Because this my I know you you got to see the Ken Griffey Junior Senior thing. I didn't really get to like understand and experience it when it happened. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like young. I, I'm, I, I think when, when did when did that happen? What year was that? With the King Griffey? That was uh, 1989, 1990. Yeah, 1989, 1990. Yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah. so I was I was I was still watching Power Rangers to be barring at around that time. So that but it didn't hit me. But this this feels like crazy historic for me. Like as just a fan of the game, it's like. Crazy to see. I'm not gonna lie. This this wow. And if you want to say, I don't care about you know how many you mean you is about to go debate, especially LeBron James and Michael Jordan. I think they ruined basketball talk. But this definitely is a sign of greatness, just in general for me. But what, but what is your reaction like? Actually, finally get to see it on the floor. <clears throat> so I didn't. I, obviously, I didn't watch the game. SB. I saw. I knew it was gonna happen tonight or last night when it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, again, it's. Well, first of all, I mean, shout out to, you know, LeBron, obviously, for his longevity, Mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, being, you know, young enough to have a son who's at the age limit to make it in the NBA and was drafted in the NBA on this on the team that you play for. So, you know, again, it's it's history. I don't know if we'll ever see this again um, necessarily, um, but, you know, I think it would you know, certainly has to be, you know, marked as a historical, historical moment. And again, I think it'll be, you know, really truly marked once the regular season um, starts because, you know, it's preseason. Um, yep. It doesn't count necessarily in terms of the, the record books, but, um, but the fact that you get to see this, I think is, you know, a pretty cool thing. And, mm-hmm. and again, you know, you know, you're a father and I'm a father and there are a lot of fathers out here, you know, mm-hmm. to be able to work with, 
your children, you know, is, is really cool. And as we talked about, yeah, even, sure. you know, with, uh, you know, the Lakers drafting Bronny, that this was a, a, a big deal. Yeah, um, sure. And the only comparison I could make was, you know, Will Smith working with his son, Jaden, mm-hmm. and Pursuit and of Happiness. Um, that was a good. That was a good movie, by the way. Yeah, sort of happened, now, was a, a good movie. Now the, the catch is they worked together again, and the movie wasn't that good, you know. So this could this could be pursuit of happiness, or this could be After Earth. We don't know. I mean, it, it could be either one. Either one. It, it, it could definitely go either way. I wanted like for people are fans of the game, and I, I was, the only thing I feel bad about like Bronny is because of, like like I was just mentioned before, because because of that goat debate thing. It's so annoying that you can't just actually just sit and enjoy this because the, remember the first thing that came about the nepotism, like, so what? Like, America is was built off nepotism. The, it's, it's, a, it's a part of the life. If you were in a position, if anyone as a parent, both you like to be, you both are parents. If I'm in a position to help my child do something, I'm going to help my child do it. That's a part of being a parent. Then two... I, obviously, Bronny is and not at the ta- talent level of like when LeBron James came in, but it's like you got to give the kid time to really develop. You see certain promises of him like being a defensive guy and offensively, I don't care who you are. And, and to get to be like that at the NBA level, you have to be like a Kevin Durant type of score where you could just instantly get buckets because that's the only thing like the casual fan understand. Anything outside of scoring points, the casual fan don't understand the game of basketball. I see guys like Patrick Beverly, who's the same size as Bronny. Patrick Beverly led the nation in scoring in high school, averaged 35, went to the NBA, straight defensive guy, couldn't, couldn't score at all. So it's a different level to these things. So I think, like, I'm just going to sit and enjoy and watch this as a fan of the game. I'm not going to compare. I'm not going to compare. I'm not going to do none of that at all. I'm just going to actually sit and enjoy this because this is, as a fan of the game, life-changing type stuff to see. Yeah. Now, Michelle Schneid, um, we got an NFL game tonight, and obviously you guys seeing that this is a pre-record. Uh, we record earlier. You already know on football games we always record the show earlier. If y'all want us to start doing watch alongs, let me and Sean know. You know me and Sean, we'll make it happen for y'all. So if y'all want to watch along, maybe you have to get on like a uh, playback TV, but you can actually like have the game on stream while you're doing it and everything. So shall we might. So if y'all want us to do that, let us know. Comment, drop a review. Let us know what you want us to do. What you want us to add to the show. But tonight we do got the Chiefs versus your Saints tonight, and obviously we 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 talked about our picks of the week that this game don't matter. You'll find out later in the show who won this week, so this game doesn't matter at all. But what is your expectations for tonight's game, or for your Saints at least, Sean? Well, I think you know, just not even speaking as a Saints fan, just this is going to be, I think, a, a pretty competitive game. Mm-hmm. Um, you have two defenses that really do come to play really well. Obviously, Kansas City has some some injuries on the offensive side of the ball, particularly in their wide receiver room. Um, but the one thing about Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes is they're not going to make any excuses. Nope. I think you're going to see um, them really lean heavily on the run game, try to get some play action going. Yep. Um, you know, they use you know Kareem Hunt is back, so we we'll get probably get to see a little more of him tonight as well. Yes, and then from the Saints side. You know, the Saints really need to get back on track after, you know, two uh, really tough games these last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, certainly, um, you know, when you when you think about and again, just thinking about it from the perspective of, <clears throat> excuse me, the Saints and you look at the division, you know, Atlanta and Tampa Bay are up in the division right now. You really want to try to keep pace with them. So I'm not saying it's a must win for the Saints. But it's definitely one of those games. If you can get, you know, a wounded Kansas City Chiefs team, uh, a win against a wounded Kansas City Chiefs team, uh, you got to do it. But bro, that, Sean, yeah, it's crazy that, that they wounded and they still undefeated right now, bro. It's like, yeah, bro, yeah, and and I think that's really, but that's the Andy Reid model. You know, mm-hmm. they don't have a certain specific way they're trying to play. Every game is a different week. It's a different game plan, mm-hmm. and they're gonna find a way try to put together a game plan that leads with them winning and, you know, any team that plays them has to be prepared for that. So well, my expectation is going to be a tough game, tight game. Um, and, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, for me, my expectation is definitely going to be a tough game. And one Travis Kelsey, he needs to figure it out at some point because 
for them to win as much as they have been winning so far, being undefeated with him not looking like the same person, like he looked like he won one foot out the league. I'm not gonna lie. I, I guarantee you, if they especially if they win again, hopefully they don't, but if they do, whatever. Um it's definitely Travis Kelsey last year. I, I don't I don't see it in him no more, man. He he doesn't look the same. But Travis Kelsey needs to be a big part because uh, no Pachinko with the running game. You know, you still got the young receiver core, but Rice is gone too. At some point, dog, you got you got to play. You you got to you got to show up because Patrick Holmes is going to need you at some point. And that defense is only going to do so much they can because the Saints defense is not a slouch either. Uh, Alvin Kamara is going to have to play big this game too. But I, I can see the Chiefs because it's at Kansas City. I see the Chiefs still remaining undefeated. I think I picked the Chiefs this week too when I, when we did our picks. You did. Uh, yeah, I, I still see the Chiefs remaining undefeated in this game. But it will be uh, tougher than a lot of people think. And Sean, I want to just I want to acknowledge something about the NFL and which which what I do love about the NFL because I know some fans get caught up into like they just want it to be like the same story where it'd be like, oh yeah, this is the best team, so they should dominate. This NFL season so far has been upside down. If I told you by what what week we we going to what week six? This week this is week, this your week five tonight. Week five, the end of week five tonight. That. The Commanders will be leading their division. The, the 49ers is third in their division and don't have a winning record. The Vikings are undefeated. Like, then you go to the other side. The Chiefs got majority of their players injured. They undefeated. Aaron Rodgers got a losing record coming back. The Bengals look awful. The Browns look awful. You would call me crazy. Like, this, this season is, like, completely upside down. I know it's still early, but, Sean, I cannot deny this is like something you can't write, like at all. It's like everything is like upside down. There's nothing going this plan. No, I mean it is. It has been a very unpredictable regular season so far. I think some of it, you know, when you talk about teams that everybody had high expectations for coming in the mm-hmm. season, those teams had high expectations as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, when you just look at the attrition of the, the team like San Francisco, for example, that's played deep into the playoffs pretty much every year for the last four years, mm-hmm. um, that's, that attrition seems to be catching up, not just in terms of injury, but just in terms of loss of talent, yeah. um, you know, particularly on the defense side of the ball. Uh, when you look at some of the guys they've, they've had to let go or some of the guys who've left, you know, via free agency, mm-hmm. um, it's hard to maintain um, that level of excellence. And you look at it, I mean, you think about, Every previous Super Bowl loser does never never get doesn't get back to the Super Bowl. The last time it happened was like Buffalo in the early nineties. Mm-hmm. So it's just not it's just not easy when you lose the Super Bowl in particular to get back the next year. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, but also, I mean, again, you just look at some of these teams again that had unexpected injuries and guys out. It puts, I think, in, in greater perspective the need to build a strong roster top to bottom Mm -hmm. and you know and if you can't do that um and and also need to have great coaching you know we talked about brian flores in minnesota and what he's done with that defense outstanding this year you know and you know i don't know if you watched the game yesterday sp but sam Darnold didn't have a great game yesterday he didn't Mm -hmm. ball he made a made a couple key throws but it was that defense really putting them in, in position mm-hmm. to win the game and picking off Aaron Rodgers three times, which, again, Aaron Come Rodgers, on now. three picks in the game, that's not the Aaron Rodgers that we know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, so I think it's it's just telling when you just yes. look at the, the landscape of the league, roster depth, great coaching, and getting week to week, can you put together a game plan to help your team win? It's, it's, when I was looking up, like, the award race, I really, truly realize, and I want the NFL to do this too, change the MVP to the quarterback of the year award. Just just change it because Sam Darnold was like number three. I'm like, I get it. They play, but I'm like, we know the truth. Sam Darnold, comeback player of the year, might have that lock up. Comeback player that he might have that lock. But for him to get MVP, you not know, like everybody, it's clear as day that the Vikings defense is what's winning them games. And Sam Darnold's just doing his job, no disrespect. He's doing his job, making the pass we need to make the passes, 
But that defense is so good, like you just said. Last game he just played, he didn't have a good game, and they won. The Vikings defense is just the story of why that team is so good. But speaking of defense, also comment, comment and let us know who y'all got with tonight, Chiefs and Saints. So, obviously, Sean, you see teams, we talk about depth and different players and different talent. It's going to get to that point where we got to talk about this draft coming up. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about a quarterback situation because a situation happened with him and the Raiders owner. But I want to talk about his teammate first. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of things around the league about Travis Hunter. Could he play corner? Will he play wide receiver? He can't play both. I want to really look into what is the best. Also, Shador said he's the high. Travis Hunter is the highest right now, which I'm not mad at that. It's either him or the, the uh, Jeffrey Kidd from Boise State because, man, he's putting up video game numbers at running back. Yeah, no but, shot to be Cam Ward either. Cam Ward too. Cam Ward is – yeah, Cam Ward is nice. Uh, what would be the best fit for Travis Hunter to actually – play both sides of the ball way so, go. So my caveat SB is mm -hmm. it's not that I don't think he can play both sides of the ball. I don't think he can play both, both sides of the ball full time. Agreed. And what I mean is it's easier I think for him to come in and say I'm a corner and play corner but mm -hmm. you get him 10-12 snaps a game at receiver. Yep. Right. I'm cool with that. Because again, and, and the, the example I use is, and again, he's probably not he's not the greatest example because he's not a full-time starter, but he's someone that plays multiple positions, is Taysom Hill. That's Taysom nice. Hill he can line up at quarterback, he can line up at running back, fullback, tight end, tight end. He, can <laughs> he be receiver. everywhere. He can line up on the punt on special teams. He has to bounce around the multiple meetings during the week to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is someone who is not a full-time starter at any position. If mm -hmm. you come in and Travis Hunter comes in as a full-time starter, and again, you draft Travis Hunter in the top five, and I'm just saying this to be honest, mm -hmm. honestly, you draft him in the first round, he's a full-time starter wherever you draft him. Mm -hmm. um, I'm saying, hey, Travis, we want you to be a corner, but we will get you some snaps at receiver every game. I think he'd be happy with that too. Yeah, it's not going to be you're going to play because the problem is and the issue is is if you're a defense, and again, I think Travis Hunter has shown not only is he a corner, he's a number one corner in the mm -hmm. NFL just based purely on his ball skills. Mm -hmm. If you're a team and you're building your defensive scheme around this guy, being able to take this particular matchup or this side of the field, and he unfortunately goes out with an injury, you know, because he's on the other side of the ball or what, you know, you have to change your whole scheme. Oh. So mm -hmm. that would be my thing is, again, having a coach who's very open and coaching staff is very open to saying, yes, we want to get you some stats at receiver, but we need you, we need you at corner. Full time, and we again, we will get you some snaps at receiver. Where that is, um, to be honest, I think it's in well, and again, I don't know, right? Based on right now, if they'll be in the position to draft him, mm -hmm. but it will be a place like Washington. Washington, mm -hmm. I see Washington get him, but I don't know Washington doing good. Denver, Denver might get him. He wanted, he want to go to Denver because he's, you know, he. Travis Hunter, that simple kid. He don't he don't do too much. That I man, he be at home with his with his uh I believe they married now or got his girlfriend in the onesie playing the game, bro. And probably go fishing. He's simple. So he don't want to do so. You ain't gotta worry about no troublemaker come from Travis. Travis gonna be chilling. Uh he wants to go to Denver. I don't want places I know he don't need to go. He better not New York is a no-no. Uh Panthers is a no-no, but that was gonna be a team to position. I think honestly, I don't because of how this guy gets down, they won't be in a position to draft him. But for me, I think the best NFL fits for him, obviously Denver, because they could get him. But, the, bro, if he could find a way, Sean, to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers with Mike Tomlin, oh, holy, that 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 right there will lock that defense in and, and, and 
this this would lock it in incredibly. If he could find a way to give Pittsburgh good coaching, great defense, he going to be the number one corner. I know they got Porter and all the other guys, but Travis only going to come in, learn how to be the number one corner. And he's going to get snaps on the offensive side of the ball. And Mike Tomlin going to use him correctly. But to come in a situation where he will fit in perfectly, I definitely see Pittsburgh. But I don't I don't see Pittsburgh being in a position to get him. So I could probably say the best fit for maybe Broncos. Um, I think, I think where, where, you, where he wants to be and where any player should want to be, and I think we're going to, and I know we got another story we got to talk about here in a moment, but yeah. um, where he should want to be is where there's organizational stability. Yes. Right? So you mentioned Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is the model for organizational stability. The you model. know Mike Tomlin's going to be there as long as Mike Tomlin wants to be there. You know the Roonies are going to own the team as long as there's a team to own. You mm-hmm. know their front office is going to be very, very solid. Very, very. So I think you make a good point with Pittsburgh. I think, again, it's got to be somewhere where there's great organizational stability and it's not a lot of turnover. Cause again, mm-hmm. new coaching staff comes in and that new coaching staff may say, Hey, listen, we don't want you to do that. Yep. You know? So, you, you know, it needs to be somewhere where the moment he's walking in, he generally knows this is who's going to be here. This is who I'm going to play for. Yep. And, and so I think you make a great point. Pittsburgh, I put Baltimore in that conversation. Again, I don't think Baltimore. Baltimore ain't going to be able to take it. Take it. And, and, and also, I mean, again, and I don't ever sleep on teams liking a player so much that they do say, hey, we got a really well-built team here. We can afford to trade future assets mm. to, move up to get one particular guy. I don't see them uh, not – I don't see too many teams that for Travis Hunter wouldn't at least give it consideration given how unique his skill set is and how much he can help your team from day one. And also, Mm -hmm. you know, I know he doesn't do it at at, uh, Colorado, but I would also tell him we're going to find ways to get you some touches on special teams as well. Mm -hmm. Even if we're not getting you lined up at receiver, you know, 20 times a game, we get you, you know, 10, 12. You got to put the ball in the hand, yeah. You want to find ways, you need ways to put the ball in his hands, and special teams is another way to do that, particularly with the new kickoff rules. Mm-hmm. I, we're going to talk about this other team later, about should they draft a player at this position, but I just thought about it. This team, how they look at so far they this season, they might be in a race, the Dolphins. So it's like, could the Dolphins go? I know we're going to talk about the Dolphins in a second, but, I mean, I, the Dolphins best where I could get them too because they lose it. But – Speaking of a, a, a teammate, Shador, which I just looked up a mock draft, and they don't got Shador Sanders in the top ten. It's crazy. But uh, I just looked up, like, two. Two of them didn't have him in the top ten, which is crazy to me. He's going to be one of the quarterbacks. Take him, Cam Ward. Uh, they had Milro. Milro, I, I, I'm sorry, no offense. I like Milro. Milro, you know, I'm a Bama, I'm a Bama guy. I love Bama. But Milro shouldn't be higher than Cam Ward and Shador Sanders on the quarterback list. I'm sorry. But Milro, talented athlete, though. But Raiders owner made a five-word admission to Colorado's Shador Sanders. He told him, I watch all your games. It has already been hinted, even Shador and them brought it up, but they was talking about what's the best place for you to go, him and his brother Shiloh, get well soon, Shiloh, uh, where he, he was like, oh, maybe you should go to Dallas. And then Shador was like, no, I, I, they got that. You know, I'm not going to Dallas. The Raiders kind of make more sense. And the Raiders owner just added fuel to the fire by saying he watched all his game and hopefully you could play here and hope you can make this place your home. So what 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 you thinking about Shadua possibly going to the Raiders? Um, again, it's got to be organizationally stable there, right? Mm-hmm. I think Mark Davis uh, wants to build something stable in Las Vegas with the Raiders, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um. I think the book is still out on Antonio Pierce. I'm not ready to, to say Antonio Pierce is not an NFL head coach. Yeah. Um, I think it's too soon to tell. He needs time to develop and grow. Uh, Tom Telesco, who you know very well is the GM, mm-hmm. former GM mm-hmm. of the Chargers, um, mm-hmm. he understands generally how to build a pretty talented roster. Um, so, you know, should 
Shador want to go to the Raiders? I think it's all going to depend on that organizational stability mm-hmm. and their willingness to build a scheme around what he does well yes. and not saying, hey, we're going to put you in this this scheme. Um, you know, and um, if they are willing to do that, then, yeah, I think the Raiders make a lot of sense mm-hmm. for him. Um, but it's got to be you, – you, when you bring in a player, and we've talked about this with Bryce Young, who, who got in the game briefly yesterday, you know, mm-hmm. when North Carolina was getting blown out. The biggest issue with Bryce Young was he had no stability. Yep. He had no stability. Mm-hmm. Um, all the different coaches, the different play callers, like it's, it, it is. So when you as an organization make a commitment that this quarterback is your guy mm-hmm. and this is the guy you can go with, you got to do everything in your power to build it around them schematically yes. and, yep. st- and from a stability standpoint. And if they don't, then I think they're asking for mm-hmm. the situation that Carolina's in right now, which is, you know, can we get Bryce Young back on the field? Will Bryce Young get back on the field? And if it does, if he does, will it be here in Carolina? So mm-hmm. I think that's that's really what it comes down to. It's it's one guy is not going to come in and save your organization. No, um, never. It, it doesn't work like that. It's you know, it's a, a guy can be a big part of a turnaround. Like like somebody we're gonna talk about later, uh Jaden Daniels. He'd be right. a definite part of the turnaround, but it's a lot more than just Jaden Daniels playing good while he's right. like they good coaching is one of them too. Right. And again, what do they, you know, what do they do? They brought in an offensive coordinator who is running a scheme that Jaden Daniels has run before. Mm-hmm. Light right. them up. <laughs> right. And they're not asking him to go out and throw the ball 45, 50 times a game. You know, mm-hmm. so you know, so we're seeing it. So it's it's that it's a symbiosis, right? And I don't yep. you know want to get too deep, but what does this guy do well? What did he do well that said, "Hey, this is why we should bring them in"? Mm-hmm. And can we do different things? Can we do different things to help them grow and become the player we believe they can become? Because we have said we have committed to doing it around their skill set. And if you don't do that, you're asking for you're asking for trouble. You're yep. asking for trouble. And it and it will be bad. And you will be asking for a lot of trouble. And then you know who's gonna get to blame the quarterback because it's like the same thing going on. We know the truth why Bryce Young's situation ain't working. Very unstable situation in the Carolina. But you know who else? Who don't we know what the, the main story is that Young is a bust and that's not necessarily fair to him. Because it'd be different if he was in a stable situation, good coach, a good offensive scheme, and he just was out there playing bad, I would hear you. But that's not the case that people don't want to tell the full story. Uh, with Shador to the Raiders, though, Sean, I do have to, like, agree that he do need some stability. And I'm looking at these, like, mock drafts of other teams that could be at the top of the draft. It's I, I just seem like the Raiders kind of would fit him more. But, like you said, is, they, is, is the Raiders more stable than, like, the Patriots? Or the Browns, or obviously not the Panthers, because you don't want to go to the Panthers, or the Titans, or the Dolphins, which we're going to talk about the Dolphins in a second, or the Jets. Should the Jets start getting Aaron Rodgers back up? Aaron Rodgers is old. No, nobody want to go to the Giants. So we could already say the Giants not stay. And the 49ers and the Colts look like they got their quarterback already. Um, but NFL exec, remember I just saw I looked at a, a mock, mock draft, but NFL execs scout tab Shador is the top quarterback in the 25 draft, which is crazy because I've seen two of them on a different one. They didn't have him in the top 10, which is weird. But I think they only didn't have him in the top out of the top 10 because the Raiders was out and everyone, everyone I've seen, they did have him going to the Raiders. Like they're trying to push him to the Raiders because that's don't get me wrong. Shador Sanders in a Raiders jersey, that's money. You know, it's still a business at the end of the day. But right. do you do you agree that Shador might be the best quarterback in the draft? I think he's definitely in the conversation. I don't know if there's an actual best quarterback in this draft, um, but it, but I think it's very telling just how talented this quarterback draft class is. When you look at Shador, when you look at Carson Beck, when you look at Cam Ward, when you look at you know Quinn Ewers, when you look at someone like Jalen Milrow, who's pushing themselves up the draft boards, 
you know, as well. Um, mm -hmm. this, this is a very talented quarterback. I mean, I think we could see six guys going the first round in this 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 yep. quarterback class. Um, and again, a little like um, I, probably the one that probably because is most reminiscent is is uh, ninety nine. And the 99 mm -hmm. draft, you had it was Tim Couch was first, Donovan McNabb, Akili Smith. They went one, two, three. We mm -hmm. know Donovan McNabb is the class of that group. Yes. Um, but you also had Dante Culpepper go in that draft. Mm -hmm. class, you know, so it's one of those where it's like the talent is there, but where are they going? Mm -hmm. Dante Culpepper and Donovan McNabb went to where, they're, where they were. They got to sit. They got to wait. Um, you know, some of those guys didn't necessarily get to do that. So mm -hmm. it, are you going to, even with the talent these, these quarterbacks have in this draft, SB, can they go somewhere where they get a chance to sit? Or do they have to play from day one? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that matters. I think if you go to the Raiders, it's highly mm -hmm. likely you're playing from day one unless they go out and bring in a veteran guy like a Sam Donald or like a, a Jameis or, you know, mm -hmm. or some, somebody like that, a veteran guy to help kind of bridge you to the young yep. guy. But, you know, I think that's what matters most than anything is not who's the top quarterback, but where are they going and mm -hmm. what's the situation for them? Because, again, that matters as much as their talent. No, a hundred percent agree because we didn't. If you make it to the NFL level, you're very and highly talented. But like you said, <laughs> you can ruin you can ruin a good talented player in, in a bad situation at any point of time. With from uh, Shador, I actually what I'm seeing too. Even though, because now we look at I didn't look at the position of ranking when I'm looking at like why he's still at ten. Every I like I was looking at two or three of them. They all got him ranked as the best quarterback in the draft, but everyone just got him going to the Raiders. But and I'm looking at it like situations like that because you got the Browns who possibly might have the fourth pick. Like, I'm just look. I'm just say two teams that need a quarterback: uh, Browns, Patriots, and not the Panthers. Nobody wants to go to the Panthers. Well, or Patriots don't need the Patriots don't need a quarterback. Oh yeah, yeah they don't because they got a. Uh, Who's the guy they drafted again? What's his name? He's sitting on Drake, the Drake, right Drake, now. Drake, Drake May. Drake May. So take the Patriots out. So we could go Browns, Titans, uh, Dolphins, and Jets. Even though you see, obviously they got Milro going to the Browns at four. But if you got a guy who's ranked as the best quarterback in his position, don't you just take him? Because I take him over. And Matthew, I like Milro, but – the two best quarterbacks in college right now for me is Shador and Cam Ward. I'm sorry. Them, them two guys is crazy. Now, Milro, crazy athlete. I, I can see a little bit of uh, of the guy that's with the Colts, Richardson. I see a lot of uh, Richardson in them. But I, I want to see, like, the regular plays. And I would love for Milro to go to a team where he can actually, like, sit behind. He don't need to start day one. He needs to sit behind somebody, learn a little bit, and then because the – the, 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 Af the talent is there, athletically gifted than a mug. Man, run like run like Derrick Henry. Got an arm like, <laughs> got got an arm of a cannon. So that 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 kid is nice. But I'm just saying though, like even if the Browns there, don't you just take the best best player available? Um, I think again it depends on you know what you need. I think there's a difference between taking the best player available versus need. I think mm -hmm. quarterback is unique in that where are you with your quarterback situation mm -hmm. you know when you're drafting particularly in the first round yep remember we did the draft stream you know for this year's draft we were very surprised mm -hmm. that Atlanta took Michael Penix not yes. because Penix wasn't talented but because they had just signed Kirk Cousins to a pretty hefty deal but their reasoning and their rationale was we will never be if we do things where we're supposed to do we will never be this high up in the draft to get a quarterback like this again and be in a position where we can transition from kirk who is a veteran who's you know not not a young guy um you know kirk cousins 36 years old mm -hmm. you know he's not gonna play forever we're in a position where we can make the transition from kirk to Penix 
And we see the success that like a Jordan Love has had, that Aaron Rodgers had previously, that other guys have had when they got a chance to sit behind a veteran and learn and not be forced into play and rushed mm-hmm. into play and still be competitive. So how many teams are going to take that approach? If you have a veteran quarterback right now, right, who's, you know, mm-hmm. playing really well, but you're saying, hey, we want to get ready for the future. But also is the rest of your roster as such where you could do that. Mm-hmm. And it, you're not and you're not looking at the rest of the roster and say we got some major weaknesses here. Because again, mm-hmm. back to the Falcons, the general thought was the Falcons needed to get another pass rusher. They were one of the worst teams in terms of getting the quarterback on the ground the last couple of years mm-hmm. and in terms of their pass rush pass rush win rate. So it made sense for teams to say or for people to mock mm-hmm. a, a pass rusher to them. But organizationally, they went a different way. Um, so I think it's to, to answer your question, SB, mm-hmm. I do think taking the best talent available is okay, but I think it depends on the rest of the makeup of your roster yes. and also and again, I know it's not like the NBA where you know you just say you take the best talent available and, and football positions do matter. Mm-hmm. So it still matter. And so yeah, sometimes it is we have a need of this position. We got a guy we think can come in and fill this need of this position, you know, taking that player. Yeah, no, I ain't mad at you. No, you got to take the play. But speaking of teams in a crazy position, uh, what about the Dolphins? Because people got the Dolphins at the top of the draft. Is it – obviously, we talked about last show. If y'all seen last episode, go back and watch it. Give, give us a watch. Give us a watch. Uh, we went back and watched uh, – we talked about on the last episode where the NFL said they won't do anything when it comes to the tour situation. They're not going to step in. Okay, as a team, you see what's going on with your quarterback. Tua is very talented, but if he can't stay on the field, your best ability is to be available. Should the Dolphins look at with this with this quarterback class being as talented as it is, by the way, should the Dolphins look into drafting a quarterback? Because they look like they will be at the top of the uh the draft this year because they're not winning games without Tua. Um, I think it all depends on what the long term situation with Tua is. If the plan is for Tua to come back. I don't know if they necessarily need to draft a quarterback. What I do know they need to do is make sure they have a very good backup Mm -hmm. um, and a backup who can play, but also they need a a head coach who figures out, hey, we don't have this starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. We got to figure out how to win with the backup. We're going to win with this. We're going to win figure out how to win games with the backup. Teams that have won games with backups don't want to hear, oh, our quarterback's hurt. We got to find a way to win. Next man up mentality. Yeah, yeah. figure it out. Okay. What's mm-hmm. this guy's skill set? How can we do that? How can we, you know, mm-hmm. that, that's that's the, the your coach. That's your job. Yes. So should they draft a quarterback? I think as we it all solely depends on what is to a situation long term. If mm-hmm. Tua has to hang it up or decides to hang it up, then obviously, yeah, yeah they should be drafting a quarterback. Um mm-hmm. but if not then, you know, they'll be in the quarterback market anyway, even if it's just getting a veteran back of who they know and come in and start games for them. Yeah, for me, I, I think you have to. Yeah, I, th- I think you have to. Like you said, either you got to get a very good backup or just get a young, talented guy come in. I think you have you have to do something. So if you got to go get Jameis Winston, go get Jameis Winston. If you got to go draft uh, 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 Shador or Jalen Milrow, I think Jalen Milrow, or especially uh, Cam Ward, who's already down there in Florida, you can just go ahead and bring him right across the street. You got to do something. At just even Because then now, even if you get to him back and you draft a quarterback at the top of the draft, like, like, like you just said about what Atlanta said, the Dolphins is how they team set up. If they do everything right, they shouldn't be in a position that had to get another quarterback this talented. So you got to take the chance. So if you in a top 10 in Miami and Cam Ward is on that board, Shador Sanders is on that board, or even Jalen Milrow, which I think Milrow, especially how McDaniels like to run his offense and all them crazy different motions and schemes and options he like to run, Milrow will fit perfectly in Cam, Cam Ward too. Either, either, you can't go wrong, honestly. You got to take them. I'm sorry. If I'm, I'm Dolphins, I'm there. Number eight pick, Cam Ward on the board, I'm taking them. 
I'm, I'm taking him. And then if Tua comes back and play, perfect. We don't have to force Cam Ward to play. We can sit, let him learn, and then move on from Tua at some point. Because I'm I'm done with the Tua experiment. I, I per- It's not my choice. He's a grown man. going to make his own decision. But I think he should really seriously consider retiring. Retiring is your know, life to be more important in the game of football. But we will make that choice. Uh, we will see how that choice works out once we get to that point. But, Sean, another young quarterback I want to talk about, Yes, Jaden Daniels, when I say this, is in the MVP conversation right now, Sean. Jaden Daniels, man, the commanders have found the diamond in the rough, dog. I, I don't know how they did it. They found them one, and then they put together, which it was funny because I remember early in the season, preseason, where people was making fun of the commanders because the new ownership staff, and they were saying, like, they don't know if they're going to move in the right direction. I'm sorry. Whoever, whoever in that office, they cook it. You got your quarterback. You you got the quarterback that you want to get, even though I know there was debate on between him and Caleb Williams, which please stop the comparison for Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams. They both are very talented. They just in two different situations. But you got a, a, a coach, an offensive coordinator, who fits his fits his play style to make your quarterback look way better right now, early. So what you think about Jaden Daniels? And is it is it am I overreacting by putting him in the MVP conversation? Uh, to answer your last question, yes, yes, you are. Um, it's it, they, who's the last rookie to win the MVP award in the NFL? Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Mm-hmm. So we've seen some great rookies come in and have some great all-time rookie seasons. Eric Dickerson comes mm-hmm. to mind. His rookie year was was amazing. amazing. His second year was better, but he had an amazing rookie year. Um, you know, Randy Moss had an amazing rookie year. Um, you know, um, but there's another guy who played quarterback in Washington who had just as an amazing rookie year as Jane Daniels is having, mm-hmm. and it was only 12 years ago. Um, and his name was Robert Griffin the third. Oh, yeah, RG, RG3. That first year, RG3 was nice, and it was diabolical to watch because the hits he was taking was crazy, right? So, again, it's not that. Jaden Daniels, listen, I, and I like, and what I think I like most is I saw him talk with uh, Mike Florio from Pro Football Talk last mm-hmm. night, and he's not phased by any of it. He is literally locked in on mm-hmm. trying to get better, trying to, you know, continue to grow, trying to figure out a way to help his team win football games. Mm-hmm. So all this MVP candidate stuff, he's not even in that, honestly. He is really totally – focus and that just tells me a lot about him mm-hmm. you know as a as a young man um but more importantly i think you know the big thing right now is washington has something they believe is very special but mm-hmm. I was thinking 12 years ago with rg3 i, yeah. I thought sure i was like man this guy watching him that rookie year i mean he was he was mm-hmm. dynamically outstanding and he was really good at baylor because he won the heisman at baylor but he mm-hmm. took it to another level in the NFL. RG3 was ridiculous his rookie yeah. season. I go lie. That was yeah. RG3, the shout out, to, uh, you know, and I hate to say it because you know Derrick Rose, my boy, but RG3 was like the Derrick Rose of the NFL where you like seeing it. I don't even think we seen the best of what RG3 could have been. And I think I feel the same way with Derrick Rose, even though he won the MVP. I don't even think we even saw the best version of neither one of those players because I think they could have took it to another level if injuries didn't stop both of those guys. Right. And so, yeah, so I think, you know, again, you know, it's we're five games in to a rookie mm-hmm. season. Enjoy it. Enjoy watching him play and continue to grow. But, mm-hmm. you know, is is he is he special? He is absolutely special. Phenomenal. But, but what makes it special is the ability to maintain it over yeah. a long period of time. And that's what we have to see, not just Jaden Daniels, but mm-hmm. that organization in Washington, um, yeah. you know, so, um, but is he an MVP candidate? No. Is he off as a rookie of the year? I would say without question right now, he would be off as a rookie of the year um, along, along with Malik. I think Malik Neighbors in the conversation, mm. but um, Malik Neighbors, Jay Daniels, but Jay, Jay Daniels definitely is, uh, is just doing big things. Now we got to look at another quarterback situation, but he's a vet. Is it time 
to give up on the Deshaun Watson experiment. Obviously, he got a fully guaranteed contract, so he's gonna get paid regardless. But this is another team we talking about who might who might end up being at the top of the draft because they ain't winning no games right now. Uh is it time for the Browns to give up on Deshaun Watson? Is it over with? I have to say this, and I'm saying this not as a, in defense of Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. Deshaun Watson has not played great. Agreed. But but Deshaun Watson has not played badly either. Um, oh, no. He, he ain't looking good. Well, no. And again, because everybody's going back to that season in Houston where, I mean, he was, in my opinion, when, when and, and SB, I, I, when he asked to be traded a few years ago, I did a video about what teams should trade for him, and I was breaking down their situations and looking at uh-huh. I said the only team that should not be calling the Houston Texans about Deshaun Watson is the Kansas City Chiefs. Right. That's how good he was uh-huh. that year. It was Mahomes, and for me, then Watson. I know that people are going to argue about, oh, some other quarterbacks have really good. He was that dynamic that year where you were like, he could make this best quarterback in the NFL thing a real conversation. Now, obviously, yep. there's a lot that goes into that. But mm-hmm. that, that season in particular, coming off of that season and asking for a trade, I thought mm-hmm. every team should call with the exception of Kansas City. Yep. The 30 teams should be calling – the Houston Texans about Deshaun Watson. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we know they're good. Yeah. Now, obviously, we know there's been a lot of things that have happened off the field. Him being healthy, the shoulder, schematically. Mm-hmm. But one thing I've noticed with that team is um, they got some issues on their offensive line that they have not figured out and fixed um, mm-hmm. at all. Um. And I'm not ready to give up on him until Nick Chubb comes back. Because I think when Chubb comes back, because they have not run the ball well at all this mm-hmm. season, when Chubb comes back, presuming Chubb is close to Chubb, perhaps we get to see what Deshaun Watson can really be with that type of running game. So I'm not ready to give yes. up on him, on him just yet. I want to see once they get their offensive line healthy and once they get Chubb back, what can that offense do? But I think Kevin Stefanski and Ken Dorsey, the offensive coordinator, mm-hmm. are on the clock, and they yeah. have and they have a responsibility to those guys in that locker room to if Deshaun Watson or anybody isn't living up to uh, and isn't playing up to expectations, they have a responsibility to consider strongly making a change. Otherwise, you can lose the people in the locker room, and mm-hmm. you know you have a veteran backup. And a guy who's played a lot of football uh-huh. can execute the offense behind Deshaun Watson. It's going to get harder and harder to keep justifying sending Deshaun Watson out there when he's just playing okay at best. And I'm saying okay at best. Yeah. And then for the type of money that you paid him, Deshaun Watson, and the type of talent that's around this team where they figured that. The only missing piece is our quarterback position. And Madrid, it does look even better. Even though we brought this up, people do like to use the excuse of Baker Mayfield. Shout out Big Baker. Baker has improved, but people don't bring up the fact that he was on a journey before he found his way to Tampa Bay. They just think he just went from the Browns to the Bucks and just took off. No, that's not the case. But, you know, people don't like to tell the full details of the story. But it does look bad on Terman right now that Baker is playing as good as he is. And Deshaun Watson is not looking good. So it's just another thing to fuel to the fire. And then, obviously, with the off the field things that went on, he's definitely public enemy number one. So anything else he's doing bad, they're going to add on to that. But, Sean, with the talent on this team, like you said, you don't want to lose the locker room. I think you highly got to consider uh, giving up on Deshaun Watson. It, it, it sucks. And I know Deshaun Watson had a lot of other things going on off the field, not necessarily like the bad stuff, like personal stuff issues, you know what I'm saying, family things too. So it's probably hard to focus on football when you got personal things going on, you got the, the artificial issues, stuff going on, people slandering your name every day. So I know it's probably hard for him. But when you get paid like that and you want a 100% guaranteed contract like that, which the NFL was still mad at the Browns for doing that, so they actually licking their chops and they're going to use – 
which I hate for Deshaun Watts. They're going to use him, use him as an example of why you shouldn't give a player a full guaranteed contract, which is we all know is BS. But, you know, the NFL is about that shield, baby. Nobody, no, no, no player is bigger than that shield and is going to be on Deshaun Watson. It's going to be the target for that. And it sucks. Um, and and I'll say, say this real quick. It has to be about Deshaun Watson. Probably the thing that's most interesting was Bill O'Brien, who had who coached Deshaun Watson in Houston. The mm-hmm. thing he did was change the offense where Deshaun Watson was basically running what he ran in college. So mm-hmm. it was a lot more spread. He was in shotgun a lot more. Um, excuse me. So his completion percentage when they made basically made the switch jump like seven points mm-hmm. all the way to the point where he was over 70% completion percentage as a passer. Since he's been in Cleveland, he's only about a six. He's, he's dropped like 10 points in completion percentage. That rarely happens to a quarterback like that. And again, I don't know if it's the shoulder, if it's the scheme, if it's just, it's just, it has just not worked well in Cleveland for him. And to your point, SB, I don't think they can continue going this way okay. this season and not say, okay, maybe we got to figure out something. Sometimes it's, it's just we got to find a spark. Mm-hmm. And, again, is Jameis that spark? I don't know. But what I do know is I do want to see Chubb is back. Chubb will be back soon. Mm-hmm. Um, and, again, can they get the offensive of line issues fixed? And let's see if that offense can get clicking and get rolling. That offense, they haven't, I don't think they've scored – 20 points this season. Uh, um, I would just look at it. I just closed out. Let me see. NFL, let me see how many points the Browns have also scored all this season. Look at the Browns. And that's crazy with the talent they got on their team. Uh, no, Sean, they have not scored 20 points yet this season. Get, lost against the Cowboys, they hit 17. The win against the Jaguars, they hit 18. The loss to the Giants, which I thought was going to be a game where Deshaun Watson show some, they only had 15 points. Uh, Raiders versus the Browns, they lost to the Raiders. They only scored 16 points, and obviously they just lost to the Commanders. They only put up 13 points. That is ridiculous. Yeah, that's bad. With the with the talent on his roster, there's no way. It's it's. I know Nick Chubb with Nick Chubb missing. I, I get it. I'm not going to deny it. Nick Chubb is Nick Chubb is their deal, but you got. It's a nah, bro. You, you got to be able to put up more more points than this. You got Judy, you got Njoku, you got Amari Cooper. You got to find a way to make you got to find a way to put up points. Yeah, or y'all need to be the ones calling up. But Devontae Adams probably ain't gonna want to go there. But y'all need to be the ones calling for Devontae Adams to ask whatever, <laughs> give the Kings <laughs> ransom or something, right. All right, Sean, we do got one game tonight. If you want to you, you want to pick the injury bug of the week from this game or you just want to pick who, who you got your big injury bug, it sucks when it happens, but who you got? Injury bug, obviously, Rasheed Rice. Mm-hmm. You know, again, um, can the uh, – I think, you know, to see the Chiefs – will the Chiefs figure out how to do it by committee tonight? Um, you know, and again, look for more. I think definitely some play action shots. To Xavier mm-hmm. Worthy down the field, um, but you know Chiefs got to figure out how to do it by, by committee because Rasheed Rice had really truly emerged as their number one receiver. So yep. um, even passing, surpassing Travis Kelsey. So um, Rasheed Rice definitely is the injury bug for me tonight. Uh, I definitely definitely have to agree with you on Rasheed Rice, but I'm gonna add to the list. I'm looking at the injury report right here. Uh, uh, Edwards Hilaire has got an illness, so he might miss tonight's game. McCole Hartman. It's questionable with a knee injury. And they say uh, Kareem Hunt, I would say Kareem Hunt too. That sucks. But he's fully participating in practice, so Kareem Hunt should be good. But any uh, any offensive person that's keep getting hurt with the Chiefs right now, that's that's bad. So the injury bug of the week goes to, uh, I have to agree with you on that, uh, Rice. Also, we got to do the recap of the picks of the week. What's the pick recap? Who won? Who got the dub this week? Right now, your boy's on fire. What is what? Uh, I'm 3 1 right now. Yeah, uh, so that's be one of the picks this week. That's be mm-hmm. one of the picks this week. Four to four, one. Four one. We four, four one, baby. Four we one. coming back strong this season. They're not mad at you. No, no, you made some good picks this year. But hey, listen, it's a long season. We got twelve weeks, thirteen mm-hmm. weeks to go. Excuse me. So mm-hmm. you know, we'll see what happens. 
Yeah, we're gonna see what happens, man. It's be one this week. Appreciate you guys for watching. Appreciate you guys for listening. Make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, join the movement. Uh, this real takes so fake the base with SB and Sean always coming to you every Monday and Friday with weekly episodes. See you guys on Friday, and we are out. Peace. Recommend.